top of the hour, and it's the voice of Indiana County, WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160. So now he shows up without Mary Jo Bowes, when we need Mary Jo Bowes here. No. Bogart shows up, and we're talking about wedding dresses, and Mary Jo isn't here. Good morning, Jonathan. How are you? Good morning, Todd. It's good to be back. I promise I won't make a habit out of this. We just had two <laughs> events that were kind of close together. So, well, pretty cool. I uh, wanted to give both of them justice. And um, unfortunately, I am not here with Mary Jo today. I'm alone. <laughs> uh, but I'll try and do this uh, exhibit justice, and we'll see what we can learn about it. Talking about wedding addresses, our conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mac, a law firm representing injured people. Of course, uh, Jonathan, with the Indiana County Historical and Genealogical Society. So you told us about this last week, and Mary Jo was here then. Yes. And uh, she was telling us about her wedding dress and about her mother's wedding dress. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's really the type of thing that we're talking about here. Precisely. And the neat thing about this is I think everyone can relate to weddings and wedding dresses in some way. We've all either seen it on TV, known a friend who's gotten married, or been part of the, you know, ceremony ourself. Mm -hmm. And usually the, you know, the grooms, the, the gentleman, pretty much the suit hasn't changed all that much over the years. But the wedding dress has varied in style, in fabric type, um, really um, based on social class. So mm -hmm. we're looking to put together an exhibit, or it's coming up on June 16th. We're having a reception at 6.30 p.m. at the Armory, and it's free to attend, and folks are welcome to look at, we have over 30 wedding dresses spanning over 120 years at this point. Mm -hmm. So we have our earliest dress is 1886, and oh, yeah. yeah, it's old, It's but it's in fantastic shape. I don't know uh, who, you know, how they kept it so in such good order, but it looks like it just came off the bride yesterday. Now, uh, we have a range all the way up until uh, modern dresses. Uh, there will actually be a 2022 dress on display, oh, yeah? uh, courtesy of White Lace Bridal. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're, we have pretty much every uh, decade represented, multiple dresses per a decade, actually, yeah. um, starting in 1900. So mm -hmm. all the, the different – the biggest thing that changes, really, is the uh, – the, I would say the bottom of the dress creeps up a little bit towards the knees on some of these. And the top of the dress creeps down. A little bit, <laughs> yes. So uh, you would imagine that with less fabric, mm -hmm. uh, the, the dresses should be cheaper. But uh, uh, at this not point, the not the case at all. <laughs> but um, on top of some notable store-bought dresses, there are actually a few in our collection that were handmade by uh, oh, local yeah. seamstresses. One of them being crocheted as well. So it's 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 a heavy dress. It's you I know guess. yeah it's in, yeah it's incredibly heavy, um, but and I can imagine. I hope it was a winter wedding when <laughs> uh, you know that took place. Wow, how about that? Now uh, and, and and stylistically, uh, you're going to notice changes from decade to decade pretty quickly, mm -hmm. aren't you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Now I know I've been to my fair share of weddings over the past couple decades that I've been in existence, and I'm sure. You've been to a couple weddings as well, or well, participated. I always, I always say that one is more than my fair share. Yes. Because I can't think of a worse way to spend an afternoon, but that's just me. Well, what's the <laughs> biggest change that you've witnessed over uh, your tenure, I'd say? Over the years yeah. that I've been attending weddings? Yes. They're less poofy now. They're more sheer. Less poofy. Yes. I, w I would agree with that. The the form, They're a little bit more form-hugging today, uh -huh. and a few less petticoats, a few less hoops, um, which I think the uh, brides are probably happy with. Although <laughs> you do see some uh, of these items being passed down as family heirlooms and mm -hmm. uh, folks wearing them, you know, uh, wearing their great grandmother's dress for a ceremony or even renting an old one um, just because oh, yeah. it has that, they're looking for that style or that aesthetic, which is, it's fascinating that mm -hmm. despite all the modern fashion trends that folks still want to go back or there's that timeless look of you know, those late 1800s, early 1900s dresses. Now, I'm not guessing that in the armory, uh, there in the attic, there's a special wedding dress section that you just go in and pull them out of the closet and put them out on the floor for display. I'm guessing these these came from a number of different locations. Yeah, so interestingly enough, the exhibit was supposed to start with about three dresses, and it was going to be a little summer display that we were going to put up, have some signage, you know, folks would be able to come in and look at it. And then our program chairperson um, decided that she had been talking with a few people who mm -hmm. expressed an interest in these dresses, and they still had them tucked away in their attics, basements, and cedar chests. Oh, yeah. And they said, well, we could probably get a couple more.
more. And three dresses became six dresses, which became 12 dresses. Mm -hmm. And eventually, uh, we're uh, at 30 dresses now. So uh, the wow. armory floor is going to be simply packed with these wedding dresses. Mm -hmm. um, we have, they will be suspended from the ceiling. They'll be uh, displayed on the gallery wall. And there will be many, many mannequins. So the entire space is going to be filled. And hmm. it was kind of a logistical challenge to figure out, okay, you know, we need to have flow for the regular exhibits that are uh, have been there mm -hmm. for a while and are permanent. And now for this one, so this wedding dress display, so that uh, folks can make their way around, so that everyone can see every angle of the dress that they want. And that, that was the real challenge. But... Our museum chairperson, Corey Woods, and uh, Elaine Motti, our program chairperson, uh, their committees pulled it off. They've met repeatedly, and I think they have a plan. So it's going to be pretty exciting. <laughs> no live mannequins? No live mannequins, unfortunately. Uh -huh. Although uh, the uh, opening for the uh, display is going to be in the style of a wedding reception. Uh -huh. So there's going to be uh, the cookie table, the uh, punch, you know, there will be some bridesmaids walking mm -hmm. around, people in that uh, time period attire. So it's going to be pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It just sounds like it's going to be, um, well, for, for people who like that sort of thing. Yes. A, a, a very interesting night, a, a fun night. For yes. Them. Now, will the stories of each of the dresses be told on a, on a display card of some sort or a plaque? So on top of each of the dresses... Some of the ladies that have donated their dresses, and from the Society's collection, uh, they have donated photographs or let us borrow photographs, uh, you know, wedding invitations, things that made up that evening for them. So oh. we have uh, not only the dress, but for a majority of them, you'll be able to see the original wearer, you know, uh, sporting it for their special day. You'll see it on wedding day itself, huh? Yes, precisely. It's game-used. <laughs> yes. Are, these are game-used jerseys here. That's a very good way to put it, actually. <laughs> so, so, yes, we're going to have the uh, reception, and there will, on top of the photographs, mm -hmm. and there will also be a table with other accessories. Now, I'm okay with the dresses, but apparently uh, there other folks are fascinated with the accessories. We're talking oh. uh, cake toppers, purses, shoes, um, jewelry, other things that would all go with the oh. the outfit as a yeah. whole. Yes, the veils. I'm assuming so, too. the veils. There are a couple of veils. Unfortunately, uh, they <laughs> typically do not last. Uh, you know, in your average person's collection, the veils are very thin the fabric is it crumbles um after you know give it give it a couple decades i mean um like any of us give us a couple decades and, and we'd you know we'd the... be it's in better shape than many of us would be after at 120 years old it's yeah. in better shape than we would be at 120 <laughs> years old so that's the important thing to keep in mind i would assume that um, as, as you're if they've been speaking about this that some of the women who actually wore those on their wedding night some of the brides will be there yes yes and because we do have representation from the 80s, 90s, early 2000s, and very uh, dresses used as recently as 2019. Uh -huh. So, yes, and many of them will be in attendance at the event. All right. So you said about the reception. Yes, the reception. We're looking at June 16th. That is a Thursday. Mm -hmm. It's going to be at 6.30 p.m. in the Armory. Uh, it's free to attend, and we know parking can be an issue up at the Society sometimes. So we have partnered with uh, Greystone Presbyterian. They're going to let us utilize their parking lot for the evening. So we're incredibly thankful for that yeah. um, because it allows for more folks to, to be in attendance uh, for the event and see the dresses. That's the important thing. They're being brought out of the, you know, out of the attics and closets. And rather than just being tucked away, they're able to be seen by everybody. And that's the, the neat thing is it's they're yeah. appreciated. Yeah, yeah. Well, it it just sounds like something that, um, particularly for for young ladies and older ladies, uh, a chance to reconnect mm -hmm. with the past. Uh, yes, those high necklines of the past. Yes, those high necklines and all that lace, I suppose. And yeah. the, there's one dress that has a particularly long train on it too. Uh -huh. So, I'm not sure, you know, that that you see in the particular royal weddings or uh -huh. uh, you know the old time weddings that that, that the trains were just massive. And um, that's one trend I'm glad we've kind of moved away from, in a sense, because uh -huh. that uh, seems to be a lot of work for those ladies or the folks, uh, you know, bringing, bringing up that part of the dress. Yeah, 
Well, well, we'll be able to see them all. And and so it's on the 16th is when the reception is. Is yes. the display going to be longer than just the 16th? Yes. Fortunately for anyone who's out, when we have a couple folks who have already let us know they're going to be out of town, they're going to be on an early vacation. So we will be uh, having the display up until the end of July. So folks will have a solid month that the entire wow. armory floor will be dedicated just to this uh, bridal display. Yeah, well, for the entire month of July, that it really is mm -hmm. kind of neat. And and it's right sort of in the, the mix of, I guess, June is the typical wedding month. Yeah. Um, but, you know, July it kind of borders it, so uh, sure. maybe we'll get some new brides or brides-to-be that'll, mm -hmm. you know, come through and get some inspiration. Yeah, yeah. I I would assume, and you just, you know, in your imagination, you're trying to figure how this is all going to play out, that there might mm -hmm. be some generational type of things, one generation or another of the same family, mm -hmm. uh, those sorts of things. Uh, are there winter, w any winter-specific brides that have muffs or anything of that nature? There will be a couple of those on display, yes. Oh, yeah? So, uh, I mean, any you can have a wedding any time of the year, so you do have to be prepared. And it's uh, key to have the right fabric, the right you know length, mm -hmm. to make sure everything works out. Because I'm sure there are a couple of wedding horror stories where uh, <laughs> the, uh, the wrong fabric was chosen or mm -hmm. someone didn't take into account the sweltering heat or the extreme cold. I'm going to assume there are no camo there, but, uh, but there might be a, a color or two as well, in addition to the traditional white. Yes, I believe the, there's a it's sort of a, a tealish uh, color. Uh, yes, yeah, so teal seems to be the, the most popular there, but most of them are that ivory or white. Mm -hmm. And, of course, with age, some of them were originally white but have since sort of yellowed, which, yeah. again, is expected to come with age. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful idea. I like the way that it came together with the, the idea to expand it to mm -hmm. beyond the original two or three. Uh, to make something that uh, is, is really special. And it turns into an event, yeah, <laughs> a real event. Yeah. Oh, and it, it comes down to teamwork. It was, you know, it's that sharing of ideas and, you know, saying we have this product right here, but let's tweak it a little bit and let's make it something really special. Yeah, yeah. Now, the suit that you have on today, Jonathan, yes. anytime he comes to visit us, um, and, and he is Jonathan after all, so uh, the, the vintage clothing that you wear, um, uh, that would not be an atypical wedding suit for back in the day. No, not at all. In fact, um, the earlier dresses and what I'm wearing right now, you pretty much wore your best outfit for yeah. um, you know your wedding. So, ladies, you would have a dress that you would wear that may not have been white. In, in fact, originally before Queen Victoria, the, the white wedding dress really wasn't all that popular. So, um, but what I'm wearing, yes, would have been your standard. Uh, you know, outfit for a groomsman, uh, you know, and or the um, best man, you know, et cetera. So that and, night, what you don't hook a bride there? Yeah, I will. I will do my best. And um, <laughs> I, I've heard this uh, story before about how the reason that uh, you know your your lineup of uh, gentlemen or your groomsmen is typically they're all wearing the same thing is mm -hmm. because if the groom decided not to show up that morning, you know, for the wedding. The bride could just pluck down the next list. And the next man up is, hey, well, he, he, he's already dressed and ready to go, so uh, the, let's do him. It's the Mike Tomlin solution. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Jonathan Bogertz, uh, again, it is on uh, the uh, 16th of yes. June when this happens. Yep, yeah, Thursday, June 16th, 6.30 p.m., and folks can register uh, for the event, uh, get tickets on our website at hgsic.org. Slash events. Thanks, Jonathan, for coming in. Thanks, Todd. For That's Jonathan me. Bogert, and he is with the Indiana County Historical and Genealogical Society. It's a minute and a half away.